Hi everyone. So this video, we're going to introduce compound meter and why we need it. So first of all, if we look at the meter that we've already dealt with, simple meter, well, I'm looking at a, a little bit of simple meter here, something in 4-4. Four, four. And remember that for the time signature, the top number is the number of beats that we have, four beats. And the bottom number is the unit of time that we use, the durational symbol that we're going to use to represent the beat. So in this case, four beats, and they look like quarter notes. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. And we can see those four quarter notes represented with their four counts right here, just after the time signature. And then what typically happens is if we need faster or more complicated rhythms, we can divide those quarter notes into two parts very easily into eighth notes. And if we need even more complicated rhythms, we can divide those again into really our beat being divided into four parts, right, with 16th notes. Or we can think of it as each eighth note being divided into two 16ths, right? Either way, we end up with the same amount of time in each of these measures and we have the possibility for lots of variety. But there's a little bit of a problem here, and that is I can divide in two, and then I go right to dividing in four. But what do we do when we get music that uses three parts for each beat instead of two or four? So here, check out this song by Death Cab for Cutie. Starts off kind of atmospheric with the singer, bass, and the guitar come in. And you can hear the bass is more or less playing, you know, whole notes and half notes. And it's clearly four beats. So let's check it out and then I'll, I'll help you find the beats and everything. Until I eventually so atmospheric here. At the place and where then the bass is going to come in. One, two, three, four. four. In One, two, three, four. Cream. One, two, I grab three, some four. Stone. One, two, three, four. And waited for you to speak to me. So awesome, it's got four beats clearly. But how are we supposed to write down that guitar line that does this? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So you might hear that each beat, there are three even parts in that guitar line. So beat one goes, beat two, and then beat three does it again, and then four. So one, two, three, four. So we can't write those as eighth notes, and we can't write those as sixteenth notes. They don't work out. It's not four per beat or two per beat. There are clearly three per beat. We have a problem. Now we have a couple of options. So the bass line is going like this, doing something like this, right? So the bass is very simple to write, right? But that guitar line gives us troubles. How are we supposed to fit in three parts? So we can use something called a triplet to do this. Now triplets basically say force three notes where two eighth notes would normally exist. So you're basically forcing in three notes where two or four normally would be. Now that's fine, easy enough to do. It's okay to read, it's a little bit busy having all those threes. But this entire song uses this kind of figure, these three notes, for everything that they do that's faster than the beat. So all the divisions in this song stick with this three note figure. Do we really want to have to deal with forcing these threes onto every beat for the entire song? No. What we want to do is have a meter that is automatically divided into threes so that we don't have to worry about doing this special triplet figure on every single note that's faster than a quarter note and that's where compound meter comes in. So we've seen notes that are automatically broken into three parts before. Dotted notes are always broken into three parts, right? We know to take a dotted quarter note and immediately say, oh, well, I can think of that as three eighth notes. So if we know our music is always divided in threes, what we do is use dotted notes as our beats. 
then what happens is everything underneath that that goes faster is very easily divided into three parts. And what we call that is compound meter. And we have the same things as we do in simple meter. We have two beat compound meters and three beat compound meters and four beat compound meters. The real difference is just about when you divide. So when you divide up a simple meter, it's broken into twos and fours. And when you divide up a compound meter, you're always dividing into sets of three smaller parts. First, let's figure out how to write this down. So when we have simple meter, it is very easy to write down a couple of numbers to represent the beats, right? So a simple time signature always has a number on top that represents the beats and a number on the bottom that represents what note, what durational value will get the beat. So four beats and they look like quarter notes. If this was four two, it would be four beats and they look like half notes. Or say three four, three beats, one quarter note each, right? Having dotted notes as the beat is no big deal. This is an easy thing. We just see a dotted note instead of a regular quarter note, for instance, and know that automatically each of those is going to divide into three parts. And if you go faster into six parts and 12 parts, the normal system takes over after that first step away from the dotted notes. The hard part is when we have to deal with writing a time signature. We know that in a simple meter, the top number is the beats and the bottom number is what gets the beat. But how do I use a number like that to represent a dotted quarter? I can't. I can't say, I can easily say there's two of them, that's fine. Two beats that look like dotted quarters almost works because the top number can be a two or a three or a four. But how do I represent a dotted note with this secondary number, the beat unit number? Eight, fine, eighth note, four, quarter note, great, two, half note, those all make sense. But how do I represent a number for quarter note plus a little bit of stuff? That's really tough. So what we do is we just avoid it. There's no nice way to represent that unit as a simple number like an eight or a four or a two. So what do we do? Instead, we choose to represent the division of those beats. So you'll notice as soon as we divide those two dotted quarters into eighth notes, we get six of them. And that is very easy to represent as a pair of numbers in a time signature. We have six of them and they're eighth notes. So I just put an eight, right? That is very easy to do. So that is the big distinction between simple and compound meters. When you have a simple meter, you have three beats and they look like quarter notes. And the two numbers in the time signature just essentially tell you that, right? They represent the beat. But since we can't easily represent dotted notes as a beat when we get to compound meters, what we do instead is just go down a level and represent the division of the beat with the time signature. So simple meters always represent their beats and compound meters always represent the division of their beats. So there happen to be three quarter notes in a simple meter here and if we have a compound meter we might see something like there are six eighth notes in this meter the only thing that's left over then to the musician is to figure out how many actual beats are in there so that's really easy if we're representing the division we know the divisions are always into sets of three so all you have to do is divide the time signature top number by three and you get the number of beats. So if I have six eighth notes, I divide by the groups, which are three parts each. So I divide by three, six divided by three ends up with two dotted notes of some sort, right? So six on top of a compound meter will always mean you have a two beat meter. So duple meters will always, when compound, have a six on top. When you have three beats, it'll always have a nine on top because when I have nine eighth notes grouped in threes, I can divide that nine by three and I get three beats. And the same thing with 12. If I have 12 eighth notes each grouped in sets of three, then I get four dotted quarters. So one nice way to just remember is you're only gonna see for compound meters three top numbers. 
either a six, a nine, or a 12. And then you just have to remember that sixes always mean you have two beats, duple meter. Nines always mean you have three beats, triple meter. And 12s always mean four beats, quadruple meter. And if you can't remember that, just six, nine, and 12 divided by three, and that gives you the number of beats. So really simple. So now let's see what our song would look like in the right meter. So we know the song was in some kind of four beat quadruple meter. And now we're pretty sure that it also is a compound meter, meaning that all the beats are divided evenly into threes. So look how nice this looks. Besides having a slightly confusing looking new time signature of 12-8, the actual music doesn't look too bad. If you look up here, this actually looks really complicated with all these strange threes all through it. And now if I'm down here and I have my 12-8, well, I just need to use dotted notes for my longer notes, right, to fill in all the time. So a dotted mm -hmm. hole instead of a hole and a dotted half mm -hmm. instead of a half, that's for our bass line. And then look how clean the guitar line looks now. And then when we play it back, and that is a much nicer representation of the sound that we're hearing, right? Because the whole song is gonna be based on this three part division. Right? We, it's not a temporary thing like a triplet that we're just forcing in for a moment. Instead, we have a meter that really represents, hey, you have four beats and they're going to be three parts each. And then when you hear the song, it ends up being really clear. Barefoot four, one, two, three, four. Cream. One, two, I grab three, some four. Stones one, two, from three, underneath. four. So these exercises show you the beats in a meter, and your job is to figure out which time signature best applies. So first thing to do is look at the number of beats that you see. So this is four. We know that a six on top means two beats, a nine on top means three beats, and a 12 on top means four. So we've already been able to eliminate the sixes and the nines because I see four beats up here. So I know it's gonna be one of these 12s. Then the question is, what is my division, right? Because a 12 on top is describing the division. So which beat value is gonna give me 12 divisions? Am I gonna get 12 16s if I divide these quarter notes? 12 eights if I divide these quarter notes or quarters? Well, we know how to divide a dotted quarter note down into its next level. We say three of the next faster thing, right? So three eighths each. So three, six, nine, 12 eighths. All right, two beats are in view. So it must be six, right? Six for two beats, nine for three, 12 for four. And then if I divide these, I would get three quarter notes each, right? three of the next faster, the next smaller beat value, right? So half note, the next smaller thing is quarter note, and there will always be three when I see a dot, right? So three quarters and three quarters make a total of six quarters. Two beats that look like dotted eights, dotted eights divided will be three sixteenths each. So that's six sixteenths. Okay, three items, that means it's gotta be a nine on top. Then the question is, how many divisions do I get when I divide these beats? So a dotted half divided into three is quarters, three quarters. So three quarters each gives me nine quarters. Dotted eighths. And those must, there's two, it's got to be a six. So six sixteenths. Four. So that must be a 12 on top. And then how do these divide? Well, every dotted half turns into three quarter notes. So three, six, nine, 12 quarters. And that's pretty much it for this one.